Today I'm going to be showing you how to crochet these funky little puffy flowers. Now you can use these for absolutely anything you fancy. They are great for attaching to hair clips or hair ties, make fantastic little gift tags for presents or amazing appliques for any crochet project you can think of. For my flowers today, I'm using a double knit yarn and a four millimeter crochet hook, but you can use any yarn weight and any hook size that you so wish. To begin, pop a slip knot onto your hook and then chain five. One, two, three, four, five. Now we're going to slip stitch to that very first chain that you made to form a little ring. So just work a slip stitch into that first chain. And we now have a central ring, which we are going to work all our stitches into. As we crochet our stitches for this next round, I'm also going to work over the tail from my little chain ring here. So I'm going to sandwich that in as we go. So chain three, which counts as a half double crochet and a chain one. So those first two chains count as a mock stitch for the half double. Then working into the center of this chain five ring that we made and over the tail from that same ring, we're going to work a half double crochet. Then chain one. And again, half double crochet into the ring and chain one. Half double crochet into the ring and then chain one. Now we're going to repeat that half double crochet chain one until you have 11 half double crochet stitches made and 11 chain ones. Now I already have, not counting this chain three, I have made one, two, three half double crochets already and I need 11 in total. So I'm going to go ahead and repeat that eight more times. So half double crochet, chain one. Now, before I finish this round, I'm just going to double check that I have the correct amount of stitches. I want 11 half double crochets, chain ones in between. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. And so to end this round, once you have definitely got your 11 stitches in the ring, not including your chain three, we're going to slip stitch to the second chain of that first chain three that you made. So one, two, and we're going to slip stitch in there. Now, if you can't find the exact space, don't worry too much, just slip stitch into that initial chain. So at the end of this round, you will have 12 chain spaces. Just double check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, Now we're going to begin making these petals. So we're going to chain four. And we're going to start half the petal in this chain space immediately in front of where you've just chained from. Now to do that, we're going to yarn over, go into that chain space, and draw up a loop, nice and tall. You want it as tall as you can possibly get it. Then yarn over and pull through 
two of those loops. If you want to pop your finger on to stop the loops coming off, you can. We're going to yarn over and pull through the first two loops only. So you're making a very elongated stitch in there. Then again, yarn over, go back into that exact same chain space and draw up a loop nice and tall. Now yarn over and pull through the first two loops. Again, popping your finger on the loops on the hook helps them not to fall off. So yarn over and draw through the first two loops only. So we're leaving these half finished stitches hanging down from our hook. We've got two, we need two more worked into that exact same chain space. Keep everything nice and tall and nice and loose. So yarn over, go back into the same chain space, draw up a loop. You'll notice I often put my finger on those loops even as I'm going in and out. Then yarn over and draw through the first two loops only. Now, last time we have one, two, three, we need four. So yarn over, go back into that same chain space, draw up a loop nice and tall, then yarn over and pull through the first two loops only. So you will have five loops in total on your hook and four half completed stretch stitches hanging from your hook. Now we're going to move into the next chain one space. And we're going to do the same thing again four more times. We're going to yarn over, go into the next chain space and draw up a loop. Nice and tall. Then yarn over and pull through the first two loops only. So that's once. We need three more of those into that chain space. So again, yarn over into the chain space, draw up a nice long loop, yarn over and pull through the first two loops only. Ooh. Oh, I nearly lost that one then. So I've got two again for a third time. And then one more time. Keeping everything nice and tall and loose. So you should have nine loops on your hook. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and eight very elongated stitches hanging from the hook. Once you have all nine loops, you're going to yarn over and draw through all nine of them. Now this can be a bit tricky because you might get caught on all these loops on the way through. So I find when I yarn over and pull through, I angle my hook down. So the grabby bit is pointing down. You're less likely to catch on all these loops as you come through. Then we're going to chain four. That first chain will secure the top of all those stitches and then three more. So it's chaining four in total, but your first chain will be nice and tight. Then going back into that same chain one space where you just worked the second half of the petal, we're going to do a slip stitch. So slip stitch into that space. And that is your first petal complete. Now it's a bit flat and odd looking. So what I like to do is push it from behind and just pop it forwards. I've just shoved my finger and popped it forwards. Then you have a nice fat petal. So now we're going to work on the second petal. So chain four, one, two, three, four. And into the next chain one space, we're going to work half a petal. Now the first half of the petal is formed with four of those very long stitches. So we're going to work four elongated double crochet stitches, just straight in. So yarn over, drop a loop, pull it up nice and tall. Yarn over, pull through two loops and then stop. That's one. We need three more. So yarn over, go into the chain one space, pull up a nice tall loop. Yarn over, pull through two and stop. Yarn over, back into that same space. Drop a loop. 
yarn over, pull through the first two, and then stop. And then one more time, yarn over, go into that chain one space and draw up a loop, yarn over and pull through the first two loops. So you've got four elongated stitches hanging from your hook. Now we need to complete the second half of the petal. So we move over to the next chain one space and again work four of these elongated half finished stitches into the next chain one space. So again, yarn over straight into the next chain one space, draw up a nice long loop, yarn over, pull through two and then stop. That's one, three more times. Yarn over into the chain one space, draw up a nice long loop, yarn over and pull through two, then stop. Yarn over back into that chain one space, pull up a nice long loop, yarn over and pull through the first two loops only and stop. One, two, three, then one more time, yarn over, go into that chain one space, drop a nice long loop, yarn over, pull through the first two, and then stop. You will have nine loops on your hook, yarn over and draw through all nine loops. Then chain four, one, two, three, four, slip stitch, into the same chain one space where you just worked the second half of the petal. Grab your finger, push it from the back to pop it forwards. So at the back you're looking like this and at the front you're looking like this. Now you're going to repeat that last petal four more times. So we'll have six petals in total. So chain four, work four elongated half finished stitches into the next chain one space. Once you have four of them, move to the next chain one space and create four more. You'll have nine loops on your hook. Yarn over, draw through all nine loops. Chain four. Slip stitch back into the same place where you just were working your stitches. Push that stitch, that big puffy stitch forwards and move on to repeat the same. So that's three, I need three more petals. So I'm just finishing off my very last petal here. Just as before, I'm chaining four and slip stitching back into that same spot and you'll be right back to the beginning again. Now to finish the petals of the flower, we're going to chain one. Snip your yarn, leaving a decent tail length. And we're going to pull that through and pull it tight. So you might want to take a moment just to re-puff up your petals. I'm just literally being quite violent with it. I'm just popping my finger in to push them all forwards. And then turn it around. We've got the tail here from your chain five ring and the tail from your chain one where you just cut your yarn. Now grab your hook, 
and pop it just behind and out. Grab that tail and pull it through. Just bringing it down. And then these two tails, we're going to knot together. Now I just do a normal double knot, nothing fancy. I'm knotting it and I pull it quite tight. That central hole will pull up a little bit and it will all scrunch up. That's fine, don't worry. And then secure that, just put my finger on it with another double knot. Now, if you want to add a third knot, you absolutely can. I'm not doing anything fancy here. And that's your petal round complete. Now we're going to work on the center of this little flower. So grab your next color. So with your next color, pop a slip knot on your hook and chain two. One, two. Now we're going to make a slightly looser chain for chain number three. So you're just going to draw a little bit of excess up. So we've just got a bit of a baggy loop on your hook here. Then yarn over and create a slightly larger, looser chain. So I've got two normal chains and then a bit of an elongated chain here. I'm going to pinch that chain I just made just so it doesn't tighten up. And then I'm going to chain four, just normally. One, two, three, four. So you can see I'm still pinching that loose chain. Now, if I let go, you will spot that loose chain right there. So I have two normal chains, this loose baggy chain, and then four normal chains. We're going to work all our stitches into this loose baggy chain. Now, whichever part of the chain you want to work into, it's totally up to you. Go for whichever area you can spot the best. I'm going to work all my stitches into this bottom section here. So just here is where I'm going to be placing all my stitches. So you might want to hang on to that little bit there just whilst you get your stitches established. Now working into that loose chain, we are going to be again doing those same elongated stitches that we did for the petals. So yarn over, go into the chain, that loose chain, Draw up a loop nice and tall, just as before, and then yarn over and pull through two loops. Now this is a bit more fiddly because we've only got these couple of chains to hang on to. So this might be slightly trickier for you, but bear with it. Once you've made a few, they're easy peasy. So we have one of these elongated stitches. We need nine more of them worked into that chain. So the second one, just as we did with the petals, go to yarn over, go into that chain, pull up a loop. Again, you might not be able to get them up as tall as before because we're just hanging on here for dear life. Yarn over, draw through two. So that's two elongated stitches. Now, as I say, we want 10 in total. So I'm going to repeat that eight more times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. You will have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven loops on your hook. Now we're going to yarn over and draw through all eleven loops. So yarn over, draw through all eleven loops. 
then chain one cut your yarn leaving a long tail it's especially helpful if you want to use these tails to sew this to anything afterwards pull that through pull it tight and then push this forward if it's not already pushed forward push it forward sort of mold it over the top of my finger there and that is your central flower puff now get your flower back place it down and place the puff just loosely in the middle like that then you want to pick it up and look for where this is my first two chains where I started look for where it sort of falls within the spaces that you worked your pink petals into so I'm just going to pick a spot here and I'm just bringing my hook through these gaps in between the half double crochets of the very first round grab that tail of the chain two and just pull it to the back I'm just pulling it all the way to the back like that so I have the yellow chain two sticking at the back and then again sort of position this other tail where you want this central flower section to lie it's very difficult to describe it's sort of diagonally across then you sort of pick that spot it's very much a by eye there's nothing scientific to this whatsoever I'm bringing my hook up in between some of these half double crochets from round one of the pink flower just as before taking the tail of it and pulling it through to the back now holding on to those two yellow tails and to pull them quite tightly so I've got them at the back here turn it around and make sure it's sitting where you want it to sit within the flower now if you want to move either one of these tails now is the time you can move it across to any one of these spaces but if you're happy mine's a little bit wonky but you know what that'll do nicely once you're happy with it we're going to knot it at the back just like we did with the pink tails you can knot it nice and tight so i'm just pulling that down so that's one knot do another knot and a third one for good luck turn it around give it a scrumple back into shape and your fab little flower is complete now it is completely up to you what you do with these tails at the back it depends what you want to use these little flowers for now if you are sewing or gluing them onto another project you can simply trim the tails at the back so you can just go ahead and snip them off If the back isn't going to be seen then you're fine to snip them off alternatively you can use these long tails as a way of attaching the flower to whatever project be it if you were adding them to hair ties hair bands hair clips <laughs> I've got hair on the brain today gift tags anything like that that you need tails for securing it you can use them for that alternatively you can of course weave them in but I'm all for ease, so snipping them off works for me. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please do let me know down in the comments what you think of this fun little flower. And until next time, happy crocheting. Bye.